What is shellac doing in my jelly beans? Isn't that the stuff they use to put a shine on furniture? Those questions came from a student who had taken to reading the list of ingredients on food labels as I urged them to do in my course on food and nutrition. The answer is that yes, it is the same substance and it's doing the same thing. It is putting a nice shiny glaze on the jelly beans. But what exactly is shellac? It's the uh, resinous secretion of the female Indian lac bug. This insect spends its whole life attached to a tree, sucking its juices, converting them into the familiar sticky substance, which has long been used to provide a glossy protective coating on wood. Shellac has also been used for a variety of other purposes, ranging from stiffening hats to making buttons. The first hairsprays had shellac as their main ingredient, and the first phonograph records were made of this material, which is soft and flows when heated, but becomes rigid at room temperature. In the food industry, it is referred to as confectioner's glaze, and can be used to give a protective glossy coating to candies, jelly beans, and ice cream cones. Since shellac is insoluble in water, it can prevent the food product from drying out by forming a moisture impermeable layer. Citrus fruits and avocados are sometimes shellac for this reason. Since shellac has long been used as a food additive without a problem, and animal tests have shown no adverse reactions, there appears to be no reason for concern about this substance as a food additive. Although the application of shellac are interesting and useful, few people realize the pivotal role that this insect secretion played in the development of the modern-day plastics industry. And plastics, of course, have become a part of our daily lives. In the early part of this century, shellac was in great demand by the expanding electrical industry on account of its excellent insulating properties. The natural substance was unable to meet the demand since it takes about 150,000 insects to produce one pound of resin. It was the need to find a replacement for shellac, which led to the development of the first truly synthetic plastic. Leo Bakeland, a Belgian chemist who had emigrated to the U.S., found that if phenol, a substance in use as a disinfectant at the time, were cooked together with formaldehyde under high pressure, a material with properties very similar to shellac was formed. In 1907, he filed for a patent, modestly calling the substance Bakelite. Immediately, Bakelite was used to make radio casings, buttons, combs, and telephones, as well as insulating materials. Many other plastics were developed following the success of Bakelite, and it seems fair to at least give some of the credit to Lassifer Laka, the tiny Indian lac bug. And that for today is our Kappa Joe.